is I could see this being a, a four-year deal. And it's a four-year deal of $55.5 million. So I don't know what... What's for what is that math? If it's a four year deal of fifty five and a half uh, million dollars per year with let's say you were gonna give me the number there? Well, I, I was waiting for you to finish. I didn't want to cut you off. Okay. Um but then <laughs> let's say that a hundred I think was hundred and seventy of this was guaranteed for Jared Goff. Yep. So uh, let's yes. say hundred and eighty is guaranteed for Jordan Love. I believe that'd be two hundred and twenty two million dollars yep. over the course of four years. I that's the deal like that's the deal I think Jordan Love's gonna sign. Write it down, take a picture, it'll be a four year deal. Two hundred twenty-two million dollars, fifty-five and a half million dollars average annual value with a hundred and eighty million dollars guaranteed. So that makes him the highest paid quarterback. And then Trevor Lawrence will jump that. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be the last one to sign. And I think his will be. I don't know if average annual value, but I think total cash and total guaranteed cash will be more. So I think Jordan Love will enter the season next year as the highest uh, AAV quarterback in the NFL. That makes me beyond nervous. I'm already nervous well, for he next won't get season. Paid that next year, but so you at least get that part of it. Like that. I don't know. It's just terrifying. I just think of next year, like I said, I think there's a very real chance that the Packers, maybe not necessarily as harsh as I was of crashing and burning, but there's a very real chance that they are not as good as they were last year, don't end up being as successful as they were last year. There's a very real chance that they're better than last year, of course, but there's absolutely a chance that they're not, I and think, that makes me nervous. I think they're going to be a better football team, but I think they're going to win like one more game. Like they, They're playing a harder schedule. Mm-hmm. They caught breaks within the schedule, and you cannot. They got lucky. I want to say lucky. Games. And I, I want to do two different things here. Their season, every team catches breaks. So their season last year is not a fluky season or any. I'm not taking anything away from it. That was a very remarkable season. It was a hell of a ride. But the danger would be to take that season and then go. Well, they won nine, so they're automatically going to jump to eleven. I think there was some cases of catching lightning in the bottle, catching teams at the right point, being hot playing over your skis because you're so confident. And I think they're going to be a better football team this year. I think they're going to win 10 games. I think they're still going to make the playoffs. And I think they're going to finish second in the division. I think the Lions win like maybe 11. I think it'll be a very tight division with Chicago winning 8 or 9. And I think that Green Bay fans will be disproportionately and wrong in their being upset about that season. And because I think they'll be a better actual football team going forward after, like you watch them statistically across the board, everything will be better. But I don't know if it translates to a lot more wins. But then, like you said, the window is closing as soon as that pen well, hits that, the paper. The window starts closing. That then Packers fans' expectations go up and up and up. And if the Packers team is not progressing as quickly as fans think it should, whew. You're gonna. I mean, honest, my brain just goes for it. I'm not a five year plan gal, but I'm thinking five years ahead for the Packers, and it makes me nervous. Well, if you looked at it like this, that Aaron Rodgers won ahead of schedule. I mean, it was before he was really yep. getting paid, and I think that's how you have to do it. So realistically, this it's not make or break because that's too high of expectations for the Packers. But like this is their prime season to go win a Super Bowl, based on. With all, yeah, with all the contracts of the receivers because and everything. after this mm-hmm. season, you got to pay Jordan Love, and then there'll be some other player that'll come up, or extensions will start hitting in. Dobbs, Watson. Yes, but even the defensive play, you know, mm-hmm. Jair, you're either going to have to re- rework his deal, other line, Jenkins deal, like all these deals that you've kind of been signing or ha- will start coming up will start popping up, and you'll have to make decisions on paying these guys. So the next two seasons are probably their sweet spot for winning. And again, that's just... That's every team, though, outside of having an all-time great. Mm-hmm. That the second you start having to pay your quarterback, it gets harder. Doesn't mean it won't. It doesn't. You still want to be in this position. I'm not saying that most NFL teams wouldn't take the position of the Packers of having Jordan Love, but I also think that it's just worth the discussion to understand that Jared Goff, who has proven that he can win NFL football games year in and year out, and be a productive to border. I mean, good quarterback. I would say for his career, he has been a good quarterback. And if you give him the weapons around him, he has been above average. Uh, I guess I don't know where you want it to Above good. Not, not great. Somewhere between great and good. For certain parts of his, he's gone to a Super Bowl, and he has also gone to the NFC Championship game. He's almost averaging 4,000 yards passing the season. Like You give him the weapons, and you basically keep him upright, and he's going to be an effective quarterback for you. Jared Goff's biggest flaw, in my opinion, is just that he's not mobile. Mm-hmm. And that he can't... The, he cannot make plays off schedule. Now, Jordan Love does a good job at that, but I don't think he's as good as Jared Goff in the pocket. So I think they're very comparable quarterbacks. I think Jordan Love, in theory, could have a higher ceiling, but let's remember, 
Jared Goff was the first overall pick? Yep. So there was very high ceiling, and he was very highly thought of. And he was viewed as the next great thing after the first two full seasons of the full starter. Just like Trevor Lawrence, who now everyone wants to poo-poo. I think Trevor Lawrence is a much higher prospect than Jared but Goff I'm just was saying, coming out. But my point is, after the two seasons of... like Jared Goff, after his uh, second season, people were like, this guy's going to be the next great thing. He got, you know, he, and then he took the team to the Super Bowl the third year as a starter. Trevor Lawrence, second season as a starter, he did basically exactly what Jordan Love did this year. Success every year over year for young quarterbacks isn't guaranteed. Go ask Jalen Hurts.